Welcome, happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to my interview with Elizabeth Hall with Elizabeth Hall Designs and 10 Ways to Make Your Home Look Great Without All the Fuss. I had the pleasure of working with Elizabeth in, was that October, November, kind of refreshing our home space, and I knew when I was speaking with you that I really wanted to have you on one of these um, Friday interviews. So thank you so much for being here. You definitely made everything like quick, easy, and actionable tips for me. So I can't wait to share some of these simple decorating ideas and designs with everyone today. So thank you for being here, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it. Great. So I am an interior designer and I'm consultation based. So basically I can help people all over the United States through the wonder of technology. Yes. <laughs> and you literally, like I did with you, walk your home with you um, yeah. through Zoom or FaceTime or any other, you know, virtual media and um, discuss any kind of decorating questions. And I also offer flat room rate, uh, flat rate room by room packages for those who need me to just pick everything out for them and um, put it together in a big package that they would receive digitally. Um, but I work with local customers. I live in Mississippi um, and I also work from anyone, work with anybody from far. So it is a blast and I'm grateful to um, be able to do this and just help people change their homes and feel better about where they live. Yeah, I wasn't, one of my friends had recommended you on Facebook and so I kind of had looked you up a couple of times and then she, I think she had ended up sharing her finished product or whatever. And then I was like, okay, I need to look into this because <laughs> like we had, <laughs> I had a couch, but like no, nothing hanging, no real rugs or anything. And you just, the, just the tips that you made were so easy and like cheap suggestions too, that I was, I just has made everything feel so much better. And um, not like anybody's coming in my house, but like the, the kids seem to enjoy it. And um, just with pictures and everything, it's been great. So That's great. yeah, so how, how would you create simple decorating for busy parents? That's a great question. So I, um, I remember the days when my children were very small, minor um, 15 and actually my daughter's 14 today. So I've got, uh, they're 21 months apart. And so those younger years were um, busy and fun and adventurous and everything in between. And so um, I felt like it was just hard to sometimes get on top of the home, the, the mm -hmm. clutter and everything that just seemed to consume my time when I really wanted to be with the children or um, just not spend so much time on the house itself. And so uh, there are so many great tips that I can share um, with remembering those times uh, yeah. that are easy to implement and make it something that is sustainable, which I think is a, a big thing, especially when kids are growing and they're so young. Right. And I can imagine my kids are four years apart. So there's definitely that age gap, but I, but I know when they're, when they're little, it's hard. You want to have a nice house. I'll hear that from people all the time. I want to have a nice house, but it's, it's hard to keep up with everything. Things get cluttered and messy. My kids have been distance learning and my youngest is definitely a crafter. <laughs> so I feel like we always have lots of like paper and Art yeah. <laughs> plays out, all sorts of things that feel like a mess and so it's like how can I not make myself cra feel crazy yet still have this space where um, she's able to explore and have fun and create things so how do you <laughs> tackle all the clutter with young children how do you do that yeah. So a few, <laughs> a few ideas. Um, one would be just for the clutter itself. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, give yourself uh, it. Well, let me put it this way. I tried putting all of the little things that went together in little bins mm -hmm. and labels and had them stacked and, yes. you know, make it quote unquote perfect. Yeah. Um, but children just pull things out and it falls on the floor and all the Legos are together with all the other toys. And mm -hmm. so um, there was just too much frustration on my part trying to clean it up to make it the way I had envisioned. And so instead of 
going to all that trouble. What I did instead was, and I recommend um, getting baskets that have lids. It could be, um, could be like the wicker baskets. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could even be a tote bin, but just put things that are like shapes, like toys together and, you know, just throw them all in there and then put the lid on it. And I think that is just easy for children to help out mm -hmm. too. They can easily put their toys in those types of, of um, containers. And then also as parents, we're not spending so much time sorting through little pieces. And right. then we just know these types of items are together, like all the balls and all the sports mm -hmm. equipment. And then you have uh, little Legos and then you can have soft toys mm -hmm. and just to, break it down into just a few larger baskets. Um, and that could be in your living room space. Maybe that's where the, the kids play right now or a playroom or even their bedrooms. But I would definitely recommend just letting go of the tiny storage containers yes. and go towards the big ones, um, at least for a time. Right. And that, that over-organization, that's Yes. I definitely fall into wanting to over-organize and then not able to keep up with that. And children, especially when they're little, they're not able to organize right. <laughs> at that higher level. So I love that, that reminder to keep it simple. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think too, um, as far as just visual clutter in our homes, yeah. that's our personal decorations. You know, one thing that I feel like is our minds are so full. There's just so much going on in the world and in work and at home that part of the joy of me just as a designer for all people is to create spaces that are not cluttered for them because mm -hmm. I know that their world and their minds really are full with a lot. And so um, one thing that I would recommend as well is to take all of your decorations and just put it into maybe on the dining room table mm -hmm. and look at each item and a kind of a Marie Kondo way, but just look at it and say, you know, does this item serve a purpose? Mm -hmm. Do I love it? Or is it, you know, special and has special memory? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, you know, keep it and find a place for it. But if the answer is no, it's okay to either donate it or give it to a friend or a slip swap type thing um, and not hang on to it. Because the more we have, the more it's visually in our space. And also we have to care for it and dust it and so forth. And so um, I think paring down just the, the stuff that we have is another great way to just simplify, especially for parents, because our kids are going to bring in enough things on their own. Babies have so much equipment, you know? Yes, yes. So um, there is time in the future for accumulating maybe a little more, but I think when the children are young, it's a great time just to pare down. Yeah. So um, that would be one thing. And then the other thing I think of that's kind of related, at least in my mind, is um, a decorative item would be a meal planner, um, like mm. a display board, where okay. you can have your meals listed for each, for each day of the week. Mm. Um, I know food planning for me, it's not really decorating, but food planning is another stressor. And so yes. whenever <laughs> the times that I have prepared and shopped and had those meals listed out um, in a visual way where I can just quickly look at it, uh, just gives me so much more calm in my in myself, you know, and just mm -hmm. um, to know that that piece has been taken care of, and it can be cute. So you can get a dry erase board or a chalkboard, put it in a laundry room or in the kitchen somewhere, or even open a cupboard, and then it could be right there on display for you. But uh, I think that's another great way to simplify and stay organized. I like that idea of like putting it in a cupboard, so it's like closed out you know, and you don't, maybe don't see it. So sometimes I know that stuff can feel like more clutter, but then you can open it up and you can see, yes. Hey, here's what I need. And maybe even add like grocery item to that yes. list and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's such a great idea. I like that. Space. I feel another thing people talk about is not having enough space or because there are all these items, <laughs> you know, especially depending on how old the kids are, what you need um, in regards to supplies, I guess. How would you um, suggest parents utilize what they have? Like, is there a way to make things easier in design, like with their floor plan and, yes. and maybe a better way, something? My Absolutely. So I think one thing that's important is, that old saying, form follows function. Mm. So 
we need to look at our homes and really think through how do I use this room? And when children are young, maybe it means we get rid of our coffee table and just have an mm. area rug. Maybe it means we push our furniture towards the wall instead of creating that cute little, you know, living room um, niche vibe. Um, maybe it means we do bring our furniture together, but think of how uh, we use our spaces. Do we need to, do we have trouble going around furniture? Is it blocking us in too much? You know, and it's okay to separate or move pieces together. So I think that's a big one, especially in living rooms um, where people I think can get kind of in a rut with the way that it is. Try moving your furniture to fit the way that you use your space. Mm. And then the other idea, um, depending on how the home is laid out, but for those who have an, an extra dining room or an extra room downstairs, um, convert it to a playroom if you need to. I know some of the, the struggle can be the children's toys are everywhere and people have a dining room, but they may not use it but once mm. or twice a year. That could easily be... Um, enclosed with a little toddler gate you know and put the little squishy foam on the ground if there's not carpeting yeah. um and then it can be the child's place where they can hang out and then they're still able to be seen you know in the main level of the home mm -hmm. um, around the living room or maybe it's a section of the living room that can be converted to just a kid's play space but i would say just think of using your home in your rooms in different ways for where your children are at currently yeah because it's okay to break those rules Right. And it's temporary, right? Yes. I've even heard people that their kids have, have each have their own room and then they end up having the, the kids share a room Absolutely. and then use the other room as the playroom or the craft room or whatever yes. for fun and just utilize the other one is this is where we sleep and the beds are there and we sleep and this is where we do all the other stuff. Yeah. Yes. That's a great idea, especially like your daughter who likes to craft. My daughter loves to craft and every little paper is so special oh. and, so important <laughs> and cannot be thrown away, you know, ever. <laughs> so another idea that I have done with my daughter is I've taken pictures of all of her art that's really special. We've kept maybe five, you know, like pick mm -hmm. your top five or top 10. Mm -hmm. And I've then turned those pictures into a, um, like a photo book from Shutterfly mm. or Tiny Prints. And then all the artwork that we took pictures of can, you know, be put somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> if, you don't want to it, if you're okay with tossing it, you could, but at least the memories are there. And then it's in yeah. just a tight little neat space. And then your child can go look at it and you can look at it and enjoy it as they grow. That's such a wonderful idea and you could almost do it by age or year or something like that depending on how much they produce yeah. or what you're willing to do yeah we cleaned out bedrooms last weekend and let me tell you I've never seen so many little pieces of paper with really important yes. <laughs> information and so much <laughs> So much value so it was a it was a process yeah th that's a wonderful idea I love I love that I need to I need to look at doing that that would be great what about color that was one of the things you recommended for us like we just redid it redid our bedroom or it's in process now as we wait I was telling you ahead of time that we're waiting for the furniture that's been delayed by two months yes. <laughs> So we're good with that as our mattress is on the, the bedroom floor. <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to manage that. But you recommended color and it makes such a difference. Can you tell us a little bit about how, um, how it can make or break a room? Yes. So I think the two things I see often are homes without enough color mm. and homes with too many colors. Okay. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong if you love it very very eclectic and very very colorful colorful and that feels peaceful because it's really about what makes you feel peaceful in your home because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, most people want a calm home um, but I find that sometimes it's just too much and so what I recommend is picking a, uh, a neutral so it either yeah. be a gray or a tan tone and for those who are concerned gray is not going anywhere um, <laughs> Tone just set out their new color forecast and yellow and gray were the colors for 2021, which yes. means it will be the colors for quite a while. So, um, so gray is in. So pick a neutral like gray or tan, 
and then pick a white or cream to go with it to give contrast. And then you can pick an uh, accent color, um, a, like a main accent color and then a smaller accent color. Mm. So I actually have some, some okay. examples to show you. So let's say um, this one's kind of a, a mushroomy gray and then we have our, our white tone. Mm. And then you could do a navy as the main color and then see how with a little yellow, yeah. it's a nice soothing color scheme um, or even a stripe. Ooh, I like that. Um, and then another one I thought, cause green is very, very in right now. So you can even do some greens and you know, a nice pattern. Oh. So. I have a friend that just painted her bedroom that green color. Oh, and it looks amazing. <laughs> I've seen pictures. It looks amazing. I'm like, that was bold. I don't know that I could do that, but I love when people do things like that. Yeah. Yes. It really can make a difference. Here's some other kind of like, if Ooh, you like, yeah. Greens and, but you can see if, if I go to a um, furniture store or, you know, go pick out artwork or something and I stick to my color palette, then the whole home or the main level can be, should be in these color tones and then everything looks cohesive. And um, then you're not distracted by things that you shouldn't add to your home. So yeah. I would say simplify the color scheme, nail it down to your white, your neutral, a main color and an accent and stick with it. And then um, you can always change it out because your neutral mm -hmm. base is there. Do you have a suggestion if people are like, I don't even know where to start finding, like maybe it's easy to choose the gray or the tan. Like I love gray, so that was easy for me. But if you don't know what like the next colors could be, do you have a suggestion of how to even begin figuring that out? Yes, that's actually a great question. Uh, one way to figure it out is to find an inspirational art piece. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a favorite artist or a favorite art piece, mm. pull some colors from that. Um, okay. so usually a good, I would say usually a blue or a green is a really great main accent color just because they're so, they're so versatile and they are peaceful. And then your yellows and your orange and reds can be your smaller accent. Okay. Um, so, or the other thing that people have chosen for um, inspirational inspirational colors is a favorite outfit oh you know a pattern on a shirt or yeah. something like that just and in, in, in fact one of my clients actually hung up a square from a shirt she likes she just decided to turn it into art oh, and so awesome. all pieces and framed her fabric and it's in her home and so um those are some great places to check okay that's those are such great ideas and so easy <laughs> <laughs> what are there any other decorating tips that you would like to share like yeah. anything that sticks out definitely I think there's a few things so um and I uh wanted to touch on area rugs oh, okay area rugs are they've they've changed so much in the last few years and they really have become art pieces themselves mm -hmm. so if someone wants to um add some a pop of color I mean that's another great way instead of the fabric or the art piece find an area rug that um, you love and then pull colors from that um, rugs USA has a lot that are great prices they are synthetic materials um, and they're easy to clean and blot up and they don't cost a lot so kids and pets is such a great option mm -hmm. um, if someone didn't want to invest in pool um, and so I would recommend that uh, another thing that I think is so important for just creating kind of a peaceful feeling and simplifying our homes is to bring nature indoors by the mm. use of plants. Mm -hmm. So I know with young kids, um, depending on the child's age, you may not want a plant within reach because that can, you know, pose issues, but putting a small plant on a ledge or, um, you know, on your kitchen, you know, countertops or somewhere with light where the plant can grow, we just need to see nature in our everyday. And you probably could speak to that more than I could. <laughs> Um, but there's something about that nature and the color green and just that soothing uh, mm -hmm. feeling that we receive when we do see it. So I think that's crucial to yes. place living things in our homes, like our plants. Yeah. Yes, that's great. And it is, it's so true. It, 
nature does add that calming element and they there's research and studies that show how that really helps you know soothe us and stuff and i think we need anything we can get right now especially and as as yet parents with young kids and older kids and everything we need things that help make our make us feel calm and having a you know doing being able to do that would be great yeah. as a parent with with older kids most of our viewers have younger children or are expecting um do you have like any thoughts or su suggestions or anything to offer as like your final thoughts um as far as homes go i would say no matter the size mm -hmm. no matter what year it was built um your home is with your, the people you love and so celebrate your home for what it is i think that the suggestions we talked about can help just make it feel more peaceful and less cluttered and um a way that is just calming mm -hmm. um but definitely enjoy that enjoy the people that you're with and uh one other thing that i have wanted to mention that we've talked about before mm -hmm. is um having taking a tray or something and decorating it seasonally yes i think that um <laughs> that is a very simple way to enjoy your spaces without being overwhelmed so mm -hmm. you know on your dining room table or maybe your kitchen island my two favorite things would be a long tray um, that you can get at a you know probably anywhere any kind of home decor store um, or even the tiered trays that i've seen at target oh. and other places where they've got the three layers um, and you can put some of them have little um like their little tray racks with edges so you can actually place items inside mm -hmm. but decorate those seasonally and then and, and that could be it maybe life is really busy with kids and you don't have the time to put into the whole house decor or a whole room but you could do a tray or you know add some pumpkins for the fall or christmas ornaments for christmas time or easter mm -hmm. eggs and bunnies for easter so i think that's just a fun enjoyable yes. way to keep the festive spirit without feeling a little overwhelmed <laughs> and i have to say that has been a game changer for me because we have this big dining room table and it's kind of in the center of our house in a way and it's the table that gets the mail drops off or school work or random toys different things and I try the best I can to always keep it clean but I didn't have anything on it for a decoration and so I think oftentimes I just be like whatever I don't care until I get so frustrated then I clean it all off and so since we talked about it, I had gotten a tray and I put the table runner down. And for the holidays, we had like little ornaments in it with the candles, like you suggested, and just felt so great to be able to do that. And then, you know, it was easy to remove as we set the table for dinner and put it back on. And so it's been a thing. And now for the new year, I ended up um, getting some lemons and putting lemons in there because we have yellow in our house. And yes. it just feels so bright and cheerful. And I'm like, this feels so good and it's so simple and it was so easy and it it does it feels um it feels amazing so i it was such a great suggestion and i'm excited to do some sort of flowers or something as we get into like spring and stuff i'm trying to oh, figure out what fun. i want to do but it's been super fun and easy yeah. and <laughs> it just changes the whole uh feeling of the room for sure that's great. Well, and it's so much easier to decorate a 12 inch by 24 <laughs> item than yes. you know, like walls and I don't know, it can just feel overwhelming. Even for yeah. me, I mean, sometimes I just, I'm like the dining room tables where it's at, you know, yeah. so go to <laughs> and then, uh, the rest stays like it usual. So, um, yeah. 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 Well, I'm so happy that you could join us and I mean, I enjoy talking to you every time and love your suggestions. Where do people find you? How, if they wanted more information or they needed some inspiration or some help with their own decorating needs, how do they locate you? <laughs> Great. So elizabethhalldesigns.com is my website. And from there actually it links, you can click on links to my Facebook page, which is also Elizabeth Hall Designs. <laughs> um, <and laughs> Keeping I'm it simple. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm on Pinterest and 
it's interior design it's interior dz ign um and so i'm also on instagram under the under ehd interior designs okay. um anyway you can find me through those links but the easiest probably would be to go to the website and then click on the social media platform from there that's awesome well thank you thank you so much and thank you all for being here and i suggest if leave a comment and share with us or and post in the group or leave a comment below about something one tip that you learned today that you plan on implementing and if you take before and after pictures even better post those and share them to for us as well so thank you again for being here and until next time take care mm -hmm.